I am Mr. Finance. Your favorite financial educator, the best of the best, the one and only, Mr. Finance. Remember to hit subscribe right now. Subscribe. Good morning, good morning vlog. Hope you guys are having a wonderful morning. So I'm over here with Keon Jr. We're rushing down to his school because today I get to hear all the good news from his teacher today. I said that with a lot of excitement. <laughs> should be quite interesting so we're kind of late kind of forgot <laughs> you know so stay tuned we'll see what happened remember to like and subscribe all right hey guys how you doing this is I'm back all right so this morning um, I just finished up a meeting at my son's school with some of his teachers Got some insight about what's going on and see how he is and I must tell you it was awesome. I had a really special moment with my son where we were hugging and talking and you know Rich and let me tell you something guys. You know when your child is going to school and we get these reports or we get these things sent home in the mail about our children don't just jump down their throats because sometimes when we do that that's why our kids shut down that's why they don't want to tell us things and like I said after today I understand a lot more and you know what it's very important to hear all sides of the story you know they always said there's a there's three sides of the story there is your side, the other person's side, and then there is the truth of what really happened. And most of the time what happened is that we don't get the opportunity to learn the truth because we never get to hear all the sides. So I just want to put that out there for many people, a lot of people that you know have children and stuff like that because if we don't spend time to learn about our children. I'll tell you, I had such a great intimate moment with my son. You know, um, <laughs> it, it was something that was needed between me and him. We needed to come back to that common place and I tell you, it felt great, it felt amazing. Like, let me tell you something. Sometimes you saying I love you to your children they hear you, but until they can feel you, they somewhat don't believe you. And, you know, we hugged today and, you know, he cried a little bit and I hope he don't kick my butt for telling you guys this, but, you know, I got all teary eyed and, and it was a moment. It was a moment where we reconnect again. And sometimes you got to learn when to do that. You know, tough guy dads, I'm telling you guys out there right now, sometimes you got to know when to reconnect with your kids and, and show the love. Not just say it, but show the physical love. Like, you know, not just being the provider, not just being the protector, but sometimes it's okay to stop for a moment and just hug and appreciate. I call it hug and appreciate. And by hugging and appreciating the moment, it kind of helps the child to reconnect. And I learned that today. And I'm, I'm super excited about that. So, you know, so today, you guys are gonna have the great pleasure of, I'm gonna share with you some financial concepts. Today, I'm gonna teach you a lot of stuff. And you're gonna actually get to learn <laughs> in my meeting today how we educate people so i'm excited about that i'm super stoked about that i'm i'm fired up i hope you guys are fired up too i hope you guys are excited to learn some of these things because it's going to be so powerful you know to learn some of these stuff i'm going to talk about 
how you could educate your friends, your family with the information that I'm going to be sharing. And on my way home, I'm going to stop and pick up some breakfast for one of my spots here in town. So stay tuned, all right? I'll be back. Mr. Finance, your favorite financial educator, the best of the best, the one and only, Mr. Finance. Remember to hit subscribe right now. Subscribe. Edison, what's, what's up, going? bro? How you guys doing? You see, I just ran up on him. He didn't even know what's happening. I didn't know. I was focused on the phone. <laughs> what's up with you, bro? I was bro? literally blind on them phone. You see me? I done come and got my food, man. We come to get some breakfast? Oh, you go to Old Town? Yeah. Old Town's where it's always at. Hey, right. shout out to my boy Edison, man. I just saw him a while ago. We, you know, I was picking up some food um, for breakfast. And now I'm heading to the house to go get ready for the 9 a.m. call. So. You guys stay tuned for that. It's going to be a great call, like I said. I'm going to share with you some concepts and show you guys how we educate families, all right? So stay tuned. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Our national campaign for financial literacy is so important. And one of the things that we're going to focus on is about, one, understanding the basics of how to build a financial foundation. So one of the things that I want to cover first is the power of, of a book. You know, they say if you ever want to hide a secret, just hide it in a book because most people today don't understand or uh, don't read one anyways, right? So why must we hide these secrets in books or why did they? You, you got to remember back in the days, many people wasn't even allowed to read. It was a crime. And only 59% of adults said they have savings. They say worse. More than half now I think it's acceptable if they... If they, if they default on their mortgage and they can't afford to pay it. So what we must do, we must take the time to learn some of the understanding of how to win the money game. Because better yet, how many people you know that is going through this? And the question is, who's helping them? So isn't that ironic that we live in one of the wealthiest countries in the world, but yet still, we always have money problems? How the fact that we work so hard all our lives and still retire poor? You know, we do so much to raise our kids just to sit and finish college with a lot of debt and debt become a way of life. That's why today I want to really focus on the idea and understanding of how to build a financial foundation. So that's why well, that's our focus. My focus is to really harp on that. You see, when I sit down with a family, I want to teach them how to build a financial foundation. It's like a house. You got to build it from the ground up. And the first thing you got to understand is that you should have proper protection in the event of disability, health problems, or premature death. But even so much, what are the protection against your estate? Do you have a will or trust? Then you got to make sure that you could actually manage your debt, debt management. See, you should reduce your liability and get out of debt. And you should set aside three to six months of your income to deal with sudden changes if your job or your business are to pay unforeseen accidents by creating an emergency fund. And you should actually save and invest for the long run. You know, all these tasks should be taken care of as soon as possible. That's the reason why we must learn what we call the wealth formula. The wealth formula is us to teach you how to understand how money works. Because it's important for us to learn the wealth formula. What is the wealth formula? The wealth formula requires money. It requires time. It requires a rate of return. It requires um, to understand how inflation and tax is going to take away so that way it equals your wealth. Every one of us, every single one of us right now is very wealthy. It's just that no one didn't, you know, the wealth that you have right now doesn't give you the lifestyle that you desire. So that's why every time you sit away. down. So then you got to look for vehicles. Let's say that you're 29 years old. You put away $10,000 one time. You was able to see the different effect of different interest on your money from 29 to 65 your ten thousand dollars will double 
every 18 years. So by the time you reach 65, you only have $40,000. What if you were 29 and you got 8%? That 10,000 is doubling every nine times. By 65, you have 160. What if you was able to find 12%? Money doubling every six years. 29, you're 10,000 by 65. It's at $640,000. See, this is the difference between your $10,000 or the 4% versus 12%. And it's six hundred thousand dollars, which is that big difference, which is equal to a twenty-year salary of someone who earns thirty thousand dollars annually. So my thing is, what kind of interest do you want on your money, so that way you could keep up with inflation? Because that's the next thing we got to cover on our conversation when it comes to the wealth formula, the inflation. They said that inflation is a silent killer, a silent killer. It says that inflation is the rise in price in goods and services over time. It says when, when the prices increase, your purchasing power decreases. For example, if inflation rate is at a 3.5%, your $100 today will only be worth $96.50 the next year. It even goes on and says that inflation happens when a country prints more money than it actually earns. You see, the result is that everybody yeah. takes the time to well, understand taxes. You got to learn the three ways your money get taxed when you need it. Your money get taxed now, your money get taxed later, and your money get tax advantage. Now, 85% of the population use what is called tax now. 85%. 85% of the population put their money in a checking account, savings account, CDs, and stocks, and mutual funds. Then you have 10% of the population put their money in 401ks. This is what a working force. 10% of the working force put their money in 401ks, 43Bs, IRAs, SEPT IRAs, annuities, and pensions. And then you have only 5% of the population. The reason you look at the wealth you... formula, it shows you a guide to build wealth. So one, if you want to get to the money, number one, you got to say you got to spend less, save more. To apply hard time plus time, you got to think of number two. You got to invest your money long enough to allow the interest to compound and for wealth to potentially build up. That takes time. Then you got to look at rate of return. Why is it a plus or a minus? It's because number three, the rate of return is very important on your money when you're building wealth. But it also plays a very important role of the money that you borrow again against you. Then number four, Inflation. See, you should, your money must earn a rate of return higher than inflation. And then when it comes to taxes, number five, you got to look for investment vehicles that have tax advantage. Now that you understand what tax advantage is. And wealth. Wealth is the result of you applying these things on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to your money. This is how you build wealth, by using the formula. To, and the to, formula. to summarize everything else up, I just have four questions for you. Because when, when you're building your future and making financial decisions, you should, you should ask yourself these questions. Wherever you plan to invest your money, wherever you plan to save your money, wherever you plan to put your hard-earning money, you got to ask yourself these four questions. Number one, can it potentially grow to achieve my goal? Number two, is it safe enough? Number three, does it have tax advantages? And number four, does it have proper protection? See, if you have a good answer to each of these questions, you're likely moving in the right direction. See, growth is good, but managed growth is better. If you can't answer yes to those four questions, that's the reason why we need to have a money talk. And that money talk requires where we give you an understanding and teach you the wealth formula. So that way you could be empowered to learn how to make those decisions for you and your family. The next thing that you must learn is the formula 1020. Knowing what you need is so important. Knowing what you need is so important, but better yet, knowing what you need and when. Because a recent article in the Financial Analysis Journal suggests that Americans need to save more. Not just a little more, but vastly more. You see, to be assured of having enough money for a comfortable retirement, they advise you to have a total of 22 times your income by the time you retire. Thus, 
If you make $50,000 per year, the target retirement number should be $1.1 million. You see, many people today will live long lives, some to the age of 100. So the need may be much bigger than you normally thought. To simplify things, you could round down your 22 times to 20 times your annual income for your retirement. As for protecting your family, your family. Many All right, guys, so that was a wonderful, wonderful training. As you can see, this is some of the ways that I educate people and teach them and give them the information and the knowledge that they need so that way they could empower themselves. I hope you guys learned a lot. Stay tuned. I'm actually going to get ready to actually start the day up and get on these phones and, you know, start making phone calls and start reaching out to providers and talking to some clients and talk to some people about the opportunity and, you know, that's how I work every day and that's pretty much how I run my business and pretty much I work from home most of the day and then hopefully tomorrow you get to see me when I go to the office and you, you get to see the office, right? Um, no, tomorrow I have to do something with somebody as far as to help them out, but we'll talk about that more later on, alright? So for now, um, I'll see you guys in a little bit. See? Getting text message. All right, guys. See you later. All right, guys. Welcome back. Hey, listen. I'm about to go live on my Facebook right now. And today what I'm going to talk about is the importance of putting together your finances before marriage. And I think that's so important. Uh, one of the biggest things that we must really start doing is really understanding before you go say, I do, you must understand what is going on first right so uh, um i do these little live streams and what i'm going to do is show people how to research and understand more before you go sign on that dotted line where it says you know marriage you know i've been married before and i didn't understand a lot of these things before you say i do and sign and there's things that you have to go through so i'm going to share um uh, shortly what are some of those things and it's on my Facebook. So if you add me on Facebook, that live stream will be there available. Or what I do, I try to put the the description or the link in the description for where you can add me on Facebook and definitely get access to this information. All right. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys shortly. Is a marriage license. Okay. Because you, let me tell you something. If you love somebody, if you're in love with someone, hear me out on this. And, you know, hit me up with some hearts if you agree with this. If you love someone and you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, it shouldn't require a piece of paper that said that I am married for me to actually perform these actions. Okay? It shouldn't require a piece of paper that said that, hey... We are married for me to start acting as if we are married. Marriage is not a piece of paper. Marriage is action. Now, what is the piece of paper that's called marriage license? Now, let's talk about it. Because if you really understand finance, you should understand some of the criteria about what the marriage really is. So as you can see here, I Googled because, you know, a lot of people like to Google things. So let's Google it and let's talk about it. It says a marriage license. I, I Googled. I asked Google. I was like, when was a marriage license required? Right? When was a marriage license required? And uh, pretty much, and then I will ask it after this, why is a marriage license required? So it says a marriage license application records for from government um authorities are widely available starting from the mid 19th centuries some are available dating back to the 17th century and canolio um canolial america it says marriage license have been required since 1639 in massachusetts with their use which is gradually expanding other jurisdictions so now you got to understand, well, what were people using before 1639? Why was a marriage license required um, for two people to come together and say that we're with each other, we love each other, and why was this an issue and why must it be documented? And for what reason was it documented? So these are the things that we got to ask and really think about. 
So let's talk about it. Let's, let's ask Google, right? The first thing I'm going to ask Google is, why, why was a marriage license required, right? And let's put a question mark. And let's see what Google says. Now, one of the things Google says here, let's scroll down, like we want to know. All right, so we, we're going to have to look into some of the, ah, let's see right here. Documents of health, no. Nope. All right, what's the purpose of a marriage license? Perfect. Let's read on and see what this, this is about, right? Because it's important to know these things. Very, very important. Now, I think about the fact that for you to obtain a marriage license, it only costs you $35 to, to about $115. But in order for you to get divorced, it's going to cost you half or a minimum of three ninety nine to a thousand dollars. Think about that. So a thirty five dollar to a hundred and fifteen dollar piece of paper could cost you half of your net worth. How crazy is that, all right, guys? So there you guys have it. Um, that's all I have for you today. Um, you saw how I did my morning um coaching call this morning you saw a little bit about some of my friends um you heard a little bit about marriage and stuff like that i encourage you guys to do your more research on that and tomorrow we'll see what happened all right um let's keep having these money talk you know what what i'm gonna do is that i think what i'm gonna do is break down the series in different topics on finance and do like you know maybe like 10 minute vlog show a little bit about what i do but also show a little bit about finance right because we're on a national campaign for financial literacy and our goal is to educate 1 million fans by the year 2020 so i hope you guys are learning a lot welcome to my crazy world of teaching finance and my name is keon corniff also known as mr finance remember to like subscribe follow all that good stuff all right spread the word tell a friend to tell a friend that hey you are now listening and tuning into Mr. Finance. So with that said, have a great night, y'all. Be good. I am Mr. Finance. Your favorite financial educator. The best of the best. The one and only Mr. Finance. Remember to hit subscribe right now. Subscribe.